Yes, section 13 of your artist development plan is on gear, instruments, and equipment. So when we start thinking about this part, now this could be an expensive part for the artist. Now I told you as we've been working through your artist development plan, most of these don't cost any money or very little money. Joining a PRO could be free or it could be 50 bucks. Filing a trademark could be $400 or more, depending on how you do it. Owning and controlling your gear, on the other hand, can be thousands of dollars, depending on the gear that you purchase. The artist's gear that they purchase. So let's look at the various types of gear. There's you know, various instruments, first of all. We've got wind instruments, brass instruments, percussion instruments, string instruments, and electronic instruments. Those are the five different types of instruments that are available for musicians. So pretty much no matter what instrument you go into Guitar Center to buy or wherever you're gonna purchase it, it's gonna fall into one of these categories. So, I mean, recently I just found out that a piano is a percussion instrument. I thought that was pretty interesting because you hit it. Uh, I thought it was always more like a string instrument. So maybe it's both. But when someone was telling me it was a percussion instrument, I didn't quite get it until I realized, oh, yeah, you hit that. So those are the, the wind instruments. So that would include things like, you know, a saxophone and there we go. The brass instruments would be, of course, the horns trumpets, the French horns, and those kind of things. Percussion instruments would be things like drums, obviously, maracas, congas, you know, that kind of stuff. String instruments, bass guitars, string guitars, I mean, um, acoustic guitars, electric guitars, violins, cellos, double basses, those would all be string instruments. And then you get electronic instruments could be electronic synthesizers or electronic keyboards and they make various um, pedals and so forth that go along as as far as being electronic and that really kind of sets up your instruments so it's one of those kind of things and what i would recommend that you do is keep a catalog of what instruments you have so i use an excel spreadsheet i would recommend that you do the same thing it will uh, and write down everything that you own including cabling and, you know, plugs and all the hard gear and soft software that you might have involved with uh, your gear and equipment instruments. As far as regular equipment goes, you know, we're looking at a vehicle, for example. How are you going to get to the gig? So there's, a, there's an equipment right there, big potential expense for the artist. What about a sound system? Well, some artists play through uh, sound on a stick, maybe a you know a bow a bow system or a small system. But other artists, they have a full PA system. They have you know monitors as well going with it, and a light system. They got trusses. They've got staging. They've got uh, all the different things that go along with a full production of a of a stage of what could go on. So. What's going to happen with all of that? So when you think about your vehicle, well, does it work? When I was an agent and I'd get artists, and I owned a booking agency, and artists would call me all the time asking me if I could represent them as a, as a booking agent. And instead of asking them what type of songs they play and where they've played in the past and how many people are in the band, the very first question I asked, do you have reliable transportation? Reliable. Yes. Can it get you to the gig? Now, how you get, get how you get home, I don't care. But if I'm going to book you at a gig, I need to make sure that you can get there. And then I've had musicians in the past say, well, my girlfriend will take me or, you know, my mom and dad will take me to the gig or whatever. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be put my time and effort into something like that because the girlfriend might not be there next week and mom and dad might just said, okay, that was the only time we're going to do that. So these are things that you have to think about. Does the artist have reliable transportation? 
and in that reliable transportation, can they fit all the equipment that they're going to need? Or do they have a trailer? Or do they have a bus? One of my clients, they play, um, they're an Ohio band, and they play Baltimore about every six to eight weeks. And in order to go play that gig, they all drive their own vehicles. Well, not all of them. It's a four piece. They take three vehicles. The drummer's got to take his own vehicle because he's got to fit his drums in the vehicle. The guitar player has got to take his girlfriend, so he wants to drive alone because they're going to stay up there in a hotel or something. The other guitar player is also a keyboard player and the bass player ride together. Sometimes the wife goes with them, sometimes the girlfriend goes with them, but at least they have enough room in the trunk, it's a pretty good sized vehicle, to put their guitars and bass and keyboard. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are, why don't you figure out a way that you can do this so you can take one vehicle? Oh, no, 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 we, we like taking three vehicles. In other words, they're never gonna go on tour if they're gonna do this. They're never gonna make any money, putting all the money into gasoline, wear and tear on the vehicles. And like I, like I just mentioned, what about a sound system? Is it a big sound system or is it a small sound system? Is it something that can hold a coffee shop or is it something that's gonna be much bigger for maybe an amphitheater or somewhere in between? Can it fit a venue like the Beachland Ballroom or the Agora Ballroom or the Agora Theater? What type of venue can their PA maximize uh, sound in? You never know. What about a light system? Some people use lighting on a stick. Okay, they have a, a truss on the right in the back and maybe they've got a truss over the drummer or a light stand over the drummer or something along those lines. As long as it works, it doesn't matter in one respect or another, but the lighting system, how is it gonna get there as well? Okay, and the monitor system. Is this a big stage? You're going to need a lot of monitors. Those things are heavy duty. That's why a lot of artists are turning to in-ears. So they don't have to lug around all this equipment. But a lot of times there's still a monitor board on the side of the stage. How are they going to get the monitor board to the gig? So these are other things that need to be thought about and considered. And certainly staging. Now, most artists don't do staging, they hire it out and they'll hire it to the local, to wherever they are. So if they're playing a festival, hopefully the festival already has the staging. But if they're putting on their own festival, or their own outdoor gig, they may call a local staging company that might be able to provide not only the staging, but to provide the gear that goes along with it, the PA system, the lighting system, the monitor system to go with the staging. And we're very lucky in Cleveland. We have a lot of really good staging companies and some that are turned into major production companies. Eighth Day Sound, for example, does major, major tours around the country and they're based right here in Cleveland. Rock Capital is another one. They do some big shows. They do all the major festivals that are in Cleveland. And many of these companies also have multiple sound systems. So they might put one at a street fest in Parma, and then they do another street fest out in Willoughby, and then they have another street fest going on or a festival going on in the flats or at the zoo or something like that. So they have multiple systems and multiple people working uh, for them. So when we start thinking about how you're gonna do this, how are you gonna fund it? Now we did talk about funding in, in section eight of your artist development plan, but like I'd mentioned, this is one of those things that can be costly for an artist. And most likely the artist has some equipment already. They might have an acoustic guitar, they might have a mic stand and a microphone, they might have a, um, a Fender amp or a small, uh, Marshall or something along those lines, or they might have uh, some cabling to plug things in and to do their sound on a stick. Okay, that's, that's fine. If it's a bigger show, maybe they don't have that equipment. Are they going to rent it or are they going to buy it? 
And then if it's a band, is there a band fund that's going to be going into this? And once again, talking about back to the agreements part, who owns it if the band breaks up? And what about endorsements? Endorsements is a very good way to go for musicians who maybe can get some free gear. And the endorse the company that's endorsing that artist will su supply them with maybe a, a guitar or strings or drumsticks or drum heads or those kind of things. Okay. So thinking about the funding, is it loans, grants, family, or friends? Okay. Might be from flipping burgers and maybe the artist is out doing it and trying to earn enough money so that they can buy a new new guitar. But I can tell you that I've seen a lot of artists who show up at gigs and they don't have a second set of strings. It's like, what? You didn't bring backup strings? Well, I, I couldn't afford it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, professionalism, okay? Then we start talking about the care of the equipment also. So this will, you know, the more you take care of the gear, the better it will be. It will lower your risk, so risk reduction. Certainly get insurance on the gear, and that's why you need a catalog or a gear list is for your insurance company. And then storage. Where are you going to store the gear? Now, if it's a guitar, you can store it in your case. Okay, that means you got to buy a case. You might keep it in your apartment or in your bedroom. Okay, that's fine. What about a PA system? Where are you going to keep it? In your garage? Okay. Is it safe? Is anyone going to steal it? Does it have a separate entrance? You're going to keep it in your basement? That means you're going to lug it up and down the stairs every time you need it? Things to think about. Okay? You got to lower that risk. Okay, so in this part of your plan, your artist development plan, section 13, you're going to put together a current gear list, and then you're going to come up with the plan. The plan for new gear is whatever. I need a new car. I need a new amp. I need a new guitar. I need a new keyboard. I need a new turntable. I need a new what? Write it down. Start manifesting. And be realistic. What are the next five pieces of gear the artist is going to need? Okay, any questions on gear?